Hello people, in this video we want to look at the treatment for acute lymphoblastic leukemia which affects children. So this is a pediatrics topic, right? Let's first take a recap of uh, the ALL and we'll come to the treatment. So basically ALL is uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It's the most common childhood malignancy. It's the most common one. Uh, 15 year old uh, below uh, age children, boys mostly but girls also, okay? So basically this is the uh, case study, a 10 year old child will present with fever, bone pain, fatigue, pallor that is anemia is there and generalized lymphadenopathy. Please um, focus on this generalized lymphadenopathy. This and all generalized lymphadenopathy will not be there in AML. Okay. So this is a clue for you. Uh, look at this uh, and how the laboratory picture is. Uh, hemoglobin is less. So this guy has anemia. His uh, WBC count is more. So he has, uh, what is what do you call this, leukocytosis, isn't it? Then platelet count is less. So uh, thrombocytopenia is there. His bleeding time is prolonged, obviously, uh, and uh, coagulation time is normal. So basically, this is uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. How can you say? Because they have given you a blood picture. In blood picture, you are able to see that there are a lot of lymphoblasts. So obviously, lymphoblastic leukemia, okay, you can say. Now, uh, if for leukemia, actually, they will say it should be more than 1 lakh, isn't it, the WBCs? Anyways, so here, what and all the child has? Anemia, the platelets are less. Then in the blood picture, you're seeing lymphoblasts and you're seeing lymph, generalized lymph adenopathy. So you can say it is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Okay, so uh, why does this happen? So basically, there is a lot of genetic things written here. We will just remember that it can be some... Uh, Hyper diploploidy, is it more than 50 chromosomes if these people have or if there is Philadelphia chromosome. So Philadelphia chromosome causes a lot of things, ALL also and um, chronic myeloid leukemia, isn't it? See this translocation, T9 semicolon 22. This is the Philadelphia chromosome. So it causes what and all, ALL, you can see it in ALL and you can also see Okay, so it can cause CML also, right? ALL also they have written, CML also they have written this uh, Rob, this translocation, Robertsonian translocation, etc. Reciprocal translocation, Philadelphia chromosome, remember. Then let us go to uh, what else we saw, the clinical features, just now we spoke about them, fatigue, fever, right? Where did they write fever? Somewhere they had to write fever, right? Didn't we write fever here? One second. Please add that here, guys. Prolonged fever, you should write. Prolonged fever. Because in the case study, they have written prolonged fever, right? See, presents with fever. So this child will have fever, pallor, fatigue, petique, purpura, bleeding, infections, lymphadenopathy, very important, hepatosplenomegaly, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, all this, this child will have bone pain, joint pain. This also they have given in the case study. Tachypnea, respiratory distress, severe anemia, that's what Pallor they said, mediastinal mass. See, if it is B site or T, uh, see, if it is uh, B cell, B lymphocyte or T lymphocyte, right? T lymphocyte, thymus, it will mature. So, there will be a mediastinal mass, okay? B lymphocyte, uh, generalized lymphadenopathy, etc. they are telling, okay? So, all these are very important, mediastinal mass, etc., okay? So, uh, that will lead to tracheal compression and that's why these people will have respiratory distress, okay? So all this you'll have to write in clinical features. While we are continuing the clinical features, and there can be high white cell count. You saw that they have hyperleukocytosis, and sometimes it can be more than one lakh at the time it will become leukemia, right? Remember there can be CNS leukemia. The CNS no, it can become like one uh, uh, safe spot for this to go and hide, and then it can uh, come out. So you should be very careful with CS, CNS leukemia. Remember how will you differentiate from AML? Because in AML there will be no lymphoped lymph adenopathy, massive hepatosplenomegaly is not very common, and there can be some gum hypertrophy in AML. Okay, very subtle differences actually. So better know it so that you can differentiate. Coming to ALL classification based on morphology, you have L1, L2, L3 and cytogenetics very easy. You will say because it is lymphoblastic, right? So you will say pre B cell, B cell and T cell, okay? Look at this classification here based on the morphology. This is the FAB French American British classification. You have L1, L2, L3. If it is possible, please remember what exactly the differences between these three are, okay? Nuclear chromatin homogeneous, heterogeneous, homogeneous some things you can look at the ALL classification now this is what we wanted to cover in this video the treatment of ALL isn't it so now let us look at the treatment of ALL this is what we wanted to look at 
treat okay so basically the good thing is though it is the most common childhood malignancy it has good cure rate okay so catch it early and treat it early kind of a thing so um, what will you give there are four four therapies here under chemotherapy you, you have something very similar to uh, tuberculosis look at these two intensive phase and then continuous uh, phase something like that you have right in tuberculosis very similar you have intensive and maintenance okay but before that two more things are there here induction is there induction therapy and cns preventive because cns leukemia can be there right so something like that you remember now induction therapy uh, the goal is that at the end of this there should be just uh, less than 5% uh, leukemic blasts only less than 5% leukemic blast should remain okay so basically this is induction therapy for a few weeks only they are giving this vincristine prednisolone l asparaginase and anthracycline just imagine you're blasting him with all this to blast the blasts so vincristine this is chemotherapy prednisolone l asparaginase and anthracycline you're adding a steroid here so understand these people are immunosuppressed isn't it so what are the drugs in induction uh, therapy vincristine very good then prednisolone yes l asparaginase yes very good then last one one more name you missed tell anthracycline okay if you can remember remember okay then you have cns preventive therapy because cns can have subclinical involvement you will give methotrexate hydrocortisone cytarabine see this again um, this hydrocortisone can be given iv isn't it so basically they are giving here methotrexate hydrocortisone that is one more steroid they are adding here methotrexate hydrocortisone cytarabine okay then coming to intensification or consolidation therapy you have methotrexate same thing l asparaginase and uh, cytarabine cyclophosphamide and some epipodophyllotoxin they are giving some toxin okay basically this is cancer treatment maintenance maintenance for 2.5 years you will give 6 mercaptopurin mercaptopurin daily you will give and methotrexate once a week methotrexate if you give once a week it's enough with or without vincristine and prednisolone or other cytostatic drugs so can you tell all this is difficult just recollect once because ALL treatment is very important in pediatrics just let's uh, recap and write okay come on say in let's use a green it's a treatment induction very good cns preventive very good intensive very good maintenance or continuous very good induction you want to reduce the blasts yes what will you give here vincristine very good l asparaginase yes i think so Uh, and the uh, prednisolone yes very good and then uh, one more thing i forgot okay let's look at the um, c wait it's actually anthracycline okay no need to uh, wonder anthracycline okay coming to the cns preventive cns to prevent cns um, what look at me what will do methotrexate hydrocortisone cytarabine okay then coming to intensification or consolidation therapy methotrexate same um, l asparaginase cyt tarabine very good cyclophosphamide and some epipodophyllotoxin very good then maintenance and uh, continuing for 2.5 years what will you give methotrexate every one week i remember what is the other thing six mercaptopurin every day six, six mercaptopurin he has to take every day with this you can give with christine or not prednisolone other cytostatic drugs etc if you want you can give actually what we didn't cover was the uh, myelo uh, lymphoblasts right you can see the lymphoblasts in the blood picture we will show you that wait see in the peripheral smear there are a lot of um, lymphoblasts okay this is important to write in diagnosis that's it for now in all guys a uh, very important for pediatrics okay it's the most common childhood malignancy remember bye bye